Well, the stage is set, the combatants are stoked, and it's time to get ready for High Stakes Duel Round 2. Welcome inside the Poker Go studio, everyone. Ali Najat alongside my partner Nick Shulman. And Nick, here we are again, presented by Brain Fuel, another hype show. But this time it's a little bit different. Why is that? Because Phil Hellmuth is riding a four-win streak into round two against Daniel. Buddy, who is going to stop this guy? I don't know, Ali. You know? Bit as, of a freight train. Well, very much a freight train. I mean, you know, it's uh, it's just one of these things. It's like I expect when, when this duel is going on, I expect to come on down here, catch up with you, and watch Phil take names. <laughs> I mean, he... Against all straight. odds, against all betters, uh, you know, and... All he does is, is silence the critics. Seemingly. All he does is win, 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 no matter what. Right, uh, right, certainly, if we're right. to believe him. Yeah. Um, the one thing I wanted to touch on real quick is, you know, Daniel's coming off of the Doug Polk loss. We talk about talked about that prior to round one. A, a huge lead, and then the massive comeback by mm -hmm. Phil. Is the slate completely wiped clean? Can you detach and escape sort of your own thoughts and being in your own head coming into this round two match, which is for 200K, 100K ahead? Good question. I mean, it's important for Daniel to try to do so you know only he can sort of answer whether he can or not but it's got to weigh on him a little bit we have the 20 to 1 chip lead slip which uh anybody who's played poker in tournaments or cash games or you know anything of the like kind of knows the feeling at least here and there it's a bad one it can stick with you um so he has that to shake off and then as you said the polk loss so it's kind of like even though he's been working so much on his game towards improvement and, and so on he comes off a very public loss to Polk, then comes off the 20 to 1 chip lead slipping away. So let's see if he could shake it off and just kind do his key, thing. Kind of a key moment, I would say, for Daniel here. I mean, really, who desperately wants to back up his claims that Phil isn't even in the conversation for being the GOAT as far as uh, even no limit hold'em tournaments are concerned. And there were some very contentious moments which you had a front row seat to. This win for Phil, a massive shot to an already inflated ego which was on full display going into round one. If you missed it, here's a taste. I limp in with King 10 mm -hmm. for one big blind. He raised with King Queen. I fold it. I limp with King Jack. He raised with King Queen. For one big blind, I fold it. Then I call off 44 big blinds with ace 10 of diamonds. Mm -hmm. What does that tell you? To me, that's apex predator shit, bro. I can save one big blind with king 10 against king jack. I can save one big blind, you know, in these two amazing spots. And then mm. I call off 44 big blinds with, you didn't like any of those plays. And to me, this is white magic, apex predator shit, king kong shit. I mean... <laughs> that was, it's not vintage, Phil. It feels like the next chapter in Phil. White magic used to be the catchphrase. Now, perhaps we're all going to be talking about APS. Yes. Apex Predator. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. With the, yes. I, I mean, like you, it. You, you had to kind of bite your lip a little bit throughout that moment. I mean, you, did you think he was just being a parody of himself? Is it just performance art at this point, playing the role of the villain? Or is he really drinking that cool? Uh, you know, I think it's a little bit of everything. There's definitely some performance art. Uh, elements of it, you know, he's kind of the goat with the whole uh, promotional stuff. To either love him or hate him, but you're watching kind of thing. But no, no, he he very much like uh, believes in himself as a player. I mean, even if he's exaggerating, that self belief is there, and I think a lot of that was was a window into his at least elements of his uh, personality and well, outlook. Yeah, yeah. He's not the only one with a lot of confidence. Obviously, Daniel has tremendous results, one of the winningest tournament players of all time, and isn't shy about saying what he thinks about Phil and obviously his own game, but doesn't tout himself to the degree that Phil does. Let's get into the odds. Daniel's so confident that going into round one, he was willing to lay minus 150. And on April 1st, after losing that he said, double down. If you want the action, come and get it. He congratulates Phil about the comeback, but is still willing to put his money where, he, where his mouth is, which is one of the issues I think that he kind of has with Phil. He's trying to get Phil to put some action down. He talked about the high stakes that Aria just win a single dollar over mm -hmm. a certain sample size, and I'm not sure that they've gotten that down. Um, but, I mean, do you, do you like it at plus 150 on the Phil side, or would you lay, yes, lay the yes. price for Daniel? You do. Yes, very much so. Um... And I mean, some people I, I talk poker with a bit. Kevin Rabichow, one of the best heads up players in the world. He's, you know, snap all in it on Phil at that price. I think he bet with Daniel himself. Uh, 
Lucky Chewy likes Phil at that price, world-class player. These are guys that respect poker theory and all that, but those are big odds, man, for a, for a match that's not that long, and Phil seems to specialize in this format very much. I mean... Well, the, the public opinion seems to side... Well, Maria Ho put this poll up, and it seems it. to side along with... There it is. Negrano. You know, I mean... There you go. On, on that particular poll, it seems like uh, about two to one of you guys think Negreanu will win. I mean, listen, oh, I, I get it. You get it as well. But end of the day, they're going to sort it out on the felt. But thus far, one thing Helmuth has a habit of doing in these matches is uh, getting the W. So Here's the thing. I, I think Daniel's issue with Phil is the guy doesn't prep whatsoever. He seems ostensibly to be committed to a very antiquated approach to poker hanging on to his, you know, things that look wildly, when it comes to the eyeball test, like huge errors, just egregious deviations from what is empirically, factually, the correct line in certain situations. And yet, here he is, again, like we talked about it, four wins into this thing. I mean, you know, it's, it's can he keep getting away with, with those sorts of, what the poker community would just render clear mistakes? I mean, firstly, we, everybody makes mistakes, some clear mistakes, you know, uh, and not to, to whatever. So, I mean, it's not, you know, Phil and also, also, no, no, let me like say, doubles yeah, down but, but he him. does it also to mess with us, mess with you guys, you know, like when, when he, he has a way of making it about how, I, you know, I see what's really going on and all you guys are real cute with your little study groups and this and that, but I, I'm the GOAT. But the thing is, it's a powerful kind of presence in the poker room because it's like, you know, it's tough to play sometimes with people who just, they mix it up and they really believe in what they're doing and they're, and they're dynamic and kind of like, you know, sometimes you play with someone they're trying a little bit too hard and you can kind of feel it's a bit palpable. It's like you need to relax and just, then you have somebody who's like throwing you these weird curveballs in all directions, passive, aggressive, but they're curveballs. He's a master of the curveball and I mean, he's very difficult to deal with in, the, in these settings, clearly, and... and it's just one of these things. And, and, and the lack of preparation, that this whole like lack of preparation storyline with Phil, I just don't know if that's true. And I don't even think he really says that. It's just different for him. He might be doing, he might be meditating or, or you know, reviewing things in his own way. But obviously the guy prepares in a certain sort of uh, way. In his own way, certainly. Yeah. But I was talking to Daniel earlier today, and he's telling me what he's doing is going back and watching the match. I'm sure Phil does too. Of course he does. He does. See, I know he does. He rewatches and thinks about it. And you know, when he when he had Apex uh, Predator shit going on, <laughs> King Kong type. Right. That was on the heels of him watching uh, the match. So yeah, I mean, he watches. Yeah. Well, if you guys failed to watch High Stakes Duel Round Two, let us take a glimpse back at Round One between Phil and Daniel. Some of the highlights. Jax, no good. Can you pass this to the gentleman? <laughs> Maybe a little bit of fatigue here for Daniel. You know? Good bluff, Phil. Not impossible. And the same hand I've had against you that won every time except this one. And just like that, they give it away to Phil and he takes the lead. It is official. And the eight pairs the board. I, flopped that one. I told you I was going to flop something. I had a what feeling. And I Phil helped me. But I, then I was like, oh, he's got the nines, which hurts. Right, good, battle. good match, buddy. I know there you're re-challenging. There will be a rematch. Right. You can guarantee that. It really was yeah. an insane match to witness. And it went on for seemingly forever. They played 327 hands. And for a little bit of perspective, the entirety of high stakes duel round one against Antonio Esfandiari, the whole three matches that they played, was 373 hands. Now, obviously, really Antonio hit, plays differently. It really it. hit me hard when Helmuth took the, the tissue the box, tissue. and I, it, <laughs> it hit me pretty hard. Yeah, I mean, they, they both play more pot control -y kind of style collectively sure. than Antonio, so I think some of that speaks to why this one is probably going to go uh, more hands. There was only one pendulum swing, by the way. Daniel called a shot, said, I'm going to pound you. Yeah. Took him right down to the felt. And then like Hulk Hogan, when they pick his right, arm up, when you right. think he's pinned, all of a sudden the Hulkamaniacs right. are going nuts. And he just 
came all the way mm -hmm. back. One lead swap. Daniel led for the first 225 hands, Nick. Phil took it over at 226. Never looked back. Daniel right. with that 20 to 1 chip. And we're all very results oriented. You know, it's worth mentioning. I mean, Daniel almost just kind of just blitzed him and got out of there. And if he did, we'd be singing a very different tune today. It might be more just Daniel's a favorite. Can he keep it up? So, I mean, it's all so, uh, it hangs in the balance. But end of the day, Daniel had him 95-5 or whatever it was and mm -hmm. could not close him out. Well, let's, let's go back to the key hand, I think, that we would, we would look at the opportunity potentially for Negranu to close it out. A couple of hands we're going to look at. The first one, this is where you and I kind of thought, maybe this is the moment, get it done. Negranu flopping trips against the over pair for Helmuth. It, it felt like it was a wrap. I don't know. We have the limp uh, just south of 4X from Negs, and then the kind of min click up from from Phil and a very playable one from Nexo. Here we go. And I think Daniel is very comfortable with Phil's range in this spot. I think he has a real sense that Phil is working oh the over pairs. Oh my God, um, Ollie, this, Ollie this could be a wrap. It, it's going in at some point. Uh, the slow play here from Nex, I, I'm not. Off we go, let's see. Check. Wow. Stand by. Joseph. I mean, it's the sizing, the check back on the turn, maybe mm. not asking for all of it right there on the flop. Clearly, Helmuth is a guy that can make a lay down. But mm. did Daniel make a mistake slow playing that one and not asking for the full stack? You know, I actually, so firstly, it's a bit of a, of a rare spot, the limp um, re-raise pre from the button. It's a, it's a bit unorthodox of a spot. I remember looking at it uh, with the computer, actually. I just kind of wanted to see, because to me, I mean, flop has to be okay. But then on the river, I thought maybe Daniel should jam as opposed to getting cute with the kind of little little tickler. But like his line is, is sound, I think, in theory. Practically speaking versus Helmuth, I like Ray's flop, I think. I feel pretty strongly about that, but you know, I might just be wrong. I mean, it's hard to say that EV's probably pretty close between his line and, and it's incredibly painful in hindsight when you have a chip light lead like that and you would, he would have stacked him had he raised flop, for sure. And maybe even if he pots the end, maybe, or, or puts him in on the end, which is reasonable that the SPR was like one, so. SPR um, stacked to pot raise. Yeah, I like, I like raising flop because I feel Phil might be slightly more weighted towards value in this situation than hands that are just gonna go berserk or whatever, but you know, it's not that big a deal. It just is after the fact when he actually loses the match. Yeah, then well, a hand like that gets magnified in, in importance. And, and to be fair, it's not as though that hand all of a sudden was the spark that sent Phil to the moon. I mean, 40 hands of sort of hovering right around that big advantage, you know, 10, 15 yeah. lines or whatever for Daniel. And then the pivotal moment, the first all-in and call of the entire match, hand 172, a couple of big draws squaring off. Deuce three, four with a couple of clubs. Colin. I call. Good luck, Phil. I have queen high, flush and straight oh, draw. Oh no. You have me crushed. There you go. Now I need There's a six a straight. to chop. Yeah. Three outs to chop. Helmuth does indeed make the six high straight on the turn, and Negrani needs another six okay. to show up. No. That it's a king. Right. And Phil and doubles after yep. all that go. patience, Nick. Double. Back in action. Was that just a situation where the deck was, was delivered Nothing straight out of the freezer? Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here, exactly. Deck straight out of the freezer and next hand, pretty much. So yeah. the fact that Daniel was willing to play for all of it with Phil with a 10 high flush draw as opposed to with trips, not something we should make a meal out of? Well, a 10 high flush draw and open-ended, as you know, of course. Um, no, I don't think so. You know, with 10-5 of clubs on deuce 3-4, there are bad turns. I mean, anything not connecting with us is bad. Where the 4-6 on 4-4-3, four, four, it's so kind of nutted up in theory. Phil can have things like king-queen, I guess, in that spot. I think Daniel was thinking about these that are drawing essentially dead. So... So it's not incongruent then for somebody no. to play one hand this way and no. the other that way. And he would play maybe both of these hands differently next time. 
such as the case with poker, you know, sometimes there are mixed strategies and things like this. And a lot of times you have pure decisions that aren't mixed, but I don't think because he got it in with 10 high, but not with the trips, it indicates some, some deeper meaning into his approach or anything like that. It just came down that way. Well, since we're talking about decisions, let's uh, look at the ones that these guys will be faced with depending on the outcomes here in round two. Obviously, if Phil wins, he'll collect another 100,000 Negranu bucks to go with the 50 he's already picked up. Then the uh, choice is Negranu's. Does he want to come back and force him into a heads up 400K match, 200 a man? If not, that seat stays open for 30 days and other people can step up and say, all right, I'll take a piece of fill for 200,000. And we know that there are some big names lurking that are waiting for the higher levels of play before they step into the arena. If nobody challenges, Phil has the opportunity to cash out. Of course, if Daniel ends up winning, then Phil will be the one that needs to decide if he wants to come back and play for the 200K. What do you think happens in each of those spots? Do you think no matter what, we're going to see the other guy challenge and come back for a third world? It's the feeling that I get. I think Daniel re-challenges 100% re um, of the time, and Phil probably pretty close to, to 100 as well. Yeah. I think, I think uh, what's also 100% is that Phil will come unfed to the event and no. will decide oh, no, don't do to this, ingest <laughs> some culinary cornucopia, mm. some smorgasbord of, of ill-fated uh, decisions here. Mm. If you missed it, by the way, during round one, this is my, maybe my favorite thing that has emerged in High Stakes Duel is Phil's dietary indiscretions <laughs> while playing and just the, the mask down, the wolfing stuff in. We, we put together a little highlight reel. I think it included, oh, what do we have? Did we have chicken sandwich, Sour Patch Kids, and soup dumplings? Yeah, something Last like that, time. yeah. Let's, let's look back. Oh. A layer of steam on the inside of the oh, clamshell alone suggests oh, a real God. sog on that bun. This is oh, the, the, he went back this, for is, <laughs> this is Ted Bundy here. Oh my God. Yummy, yummy. Oh man, that's a big, that's a bag right there. Five pounder. So, I mean, he just had a chicken yeah, sandwich and Sour double. Patch Kids. One of the best things it's like when deep sea fishermen open oh. up a tiger shark and they find like a license plate, half a tire, and a and a leatherback turtle. Yeah. And they just rolled past me. Oh my God. Oh, don't mix it up. So now I know you you kind of started out with the, uh, with the prop bets on Twitter before some of the matches that we cover. Our producers have gotten in on your act this time though, and they have developed some lines for those of you looking for a little taste of side action for what's on the menu. Some oh. flaming Hots. Wow, the eight pound, I'm unfamiliar with that dosage. The eight pound flaming Hots at seven oh. to one. Some Colby, short ribs, 25. Well, chowder would be a real shocker to me. I think I bet the don't on chowder. That's a tough sell. The bacon wrapped lamb shank at 65 oh. to one. I think I'd book all of those. You want any of that, Nick? You want? I'll book any of those things, unless there's uh, are inside. Are these arbitrary? Info. Right. I, I don't know. It's too. Yeah. Where do you even get clam? Bacon wrapped lamb shank? Oh, is God. that a carbone sort of? Oh thing? my God! I don't think so, Ali. That would. Well, I mean, look. No. He is an apex predator. And that, right. You know, I mean, a bacon wrapped lamb dog shank needs is, to eat. I mean, is kind of yeah. prey when, yeah. when you stop to think about mm -hmm. it. <laughs> so ridiculous. All right. Well, we know one thing that he's gonna be drinking, ever the self-promoter. Phil has hitched his wagon to a new product, perhaps the explanation behind that improbable comeback. It is Brain Fuel, his not-so-secret weapon. There it is right there. Head over to brainfuel.com if you wanna get a rip yourself. Use discount code 30% off. And you can drink like Phil, friends. Maybe you too can be in a four-win streak in heads-up matches. All right, this is the time. I know it's always begrudgingly that I put you to task to pick a winner. But you got to do it. Who do you like this time? I like Phil, man. I'm all in Team Phil. I like the GOAT, baby, you know? I mean, who am I to start picking against this guy? You know in sports, like, a lot of times you see something. It, I mean, I'm thinking of the combat sports, but they're, you know, tennis. I mean, I'm just thinking of one-on-one -on -one spots. Like, a guy keeps winning, you know? And it's like... A lot of times they just keep winning. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. like, I, I'm just, call me results oriented. I don't know. I like Phil. Well, Golden Knights were on an 11 game win streak. But and that's that came a team. This is just one man versus another man, you know, or one woman versus another woman. Is I this mean, his strongest discipline? I, maybe. Heads up, sit and go type formats, you right. know, where the stack sizes are a little funky and it's like a tournament type blinds. And go it's, up. it's a turbo. 
Maybe. I don't know. It's hard to quantify, but but it might be. He bo he talks about a, a heads up record that's unfa un, you know, not even real. I mean, he says he's won like 25 straight matches. He really is saying that. And I know it's like, no, there's no way, but we've seen four. You know, he has won some tournaments and there aren't that many heads up uh, tournaments, et cetera, to be played. So, I mean, it might just be like true. I don't know. Maybe he is one of the one of the spookiest ever. I know. I, listen, I hear everything that you're saying, but maybe I'm, I'm the same coin, but the flip side where I'm going, Daniel just can't lose okay. this much with all the effort he's putting in, with all the coaching. And by the way, don't talk to me about Helmuth. Oh, he's hungry. He wants, Daniel wants it. You know what I mean? I know he doesn't need it. It's not like this money is going to change his life or whatever, but he wants it. I think he wants to prove a point at this point as well that he can still hang because maybe some questions are starting to surface. Might want it. Recent might want it. A, might want it a little too bad. You know, Phil's just out there full gorilla. Mo There's going to be a gorilla in the studio walking in here in about 20 minutes, <laughs> looking to just smell things at the table, eat. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're talking about. We're talking about some apes. The real deal, gorilla mode here. But you're right. Of all your, your points are not lost there. It's true. Daniel wants it bad. He's a great player. They're both icons. Let's see. Well, Figure if you want it bad, it's going to be happening tomorrow night right here on Poker Go. High stakes duel round two. Do not miss it. Cinco de Mayo, May 5th, 8 Good. Eastern, 5 Pacific from right here in the studio. And with that, we're going to wrap up this hype show brought to you by Brain Fuel. On behalf of Nick Shulman and our crew, I'm Ali Najad saying thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow night to call the match. Hasta la vista. Wow. Um.